Hi, my name is Galina Lipina, and I help people create harmony with themselves and people in their lives. And today I'm going to talk about the topic of what might be the reason if you're constantly getting complaints that you're not doing enough, uh, your partner says that you don't love them enough, like what might be the cause? The cause could be the difference in your love languages. It's a pretty popular concept, but recently I was surprised to know that not everybody knows it. So I decided to record a longer video on this topic because I think it's a pretty important topic. Uh, what are love languages? Those are the different ways how we express and receive love. And different people have different languages. So certain things they perceive as love and certain other things they don't perceive as love, even if the other person intends it to be. So what are those five love languages? So language number one is quality time. Quality time is when you spend time with another person. And quality means you're actually present with them. So you're not just sitting next to each other and watching TV or checking your phones, but you're actually present with each other. And each language, quality time included, can have other dialects. For some people, it could be a dialect of quality time, meaning we need to sit down and talk. For some other people, it could be that we want to go do things together. We want to go out into the society or spend some time in nature, uh, go fishing or go dancing. So different people, even if they have the same, lo same uh, love language of quality time, they may have different dialects. So that's language number one. Language number two is words of affirmations. Those are the, 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 the verbal expressions of your appreciation, of your gratitude, of your love, of your compliments. Uh, and for people who have that language, it's very important to hear, I love you, I care about you, you're so beautiful today. And uh, for other people who don't have that love language, they may say things like, well, I already told you I love you 10 years ago, why do you need me to repeat that? Nothing changed. So that might show the difference between the love languages. Uh, the third love language is uh, physical touch. Physical touch uh, can also mean different things to different people. Some people mean sex, and they have to have sex and it's their physical need. For some people, it's holding hands or hugging each other or kissing goodbye before you go to work. Uh, but it's physical contact. Uh, what are the other ones? Uh, another one is uh, acts of service. Acts of service means doing things for each other. So people who um, experience love as that, they very much uh, feel love when you cook them dinner or when you take the trash out or when you hang that painting on the wall that they asked you to. So the doing is the action is the, uh, the act of service is love language. And the last one but not least is gifts. Gifts is when you give a gift to another person. For some people it could be expensive gifts like diamonds and cars. For others it could be a little note written on a postcard but because it's a physical item it qualifies for a gift. So what happens if your partner constantly complains? I would recommend listen to what they're complaining about because that is what gives us clues into what is their love language that they're not getting enough of. So if your partner constantly complains, you never have time for me. You're spending all this time scrolling Instagram, we never get to talk, then it's highly likely that their love languages might be quality time with a dialect of conversations. If your partner says, oh, we never go out, like we're always at home, why can't we go and like have dinner party with my friends? Uh, then it could be quality time with the dialect of going out and spending time with friends. So uh, another way to understand what is the love language of your partner is to see how they express love to you. Because we usually give what we want to receive. So if you're partly constantly giving you praises, it might be that their love language is words of affirmation. <laughs> and if he's constantly trying to figure out what to do around the house, maybe it's acts of services. So listen to the complaints and listen to what you, like not listen to, but perceive what you receive from them because that will give you clues towards what is the love language or the main love language of your partner. Why is that important to know? Because if we give love to the people we care about in the way that they don't hear it, we can give a lot, but none of it will be received in the way that we intend to. Think of it as different languages, a, like physical languages. When you go to another country and you try to speak language that locals don't understand, 
you can ask for water and you can tell them what you want to give them many times over they still won't get you <laughs> so how do we deal with that like if you discover that the love language of your and your partner are different um, well it's the same as when you go to a different country how do you how do you communicate well there are two ways it's either you learn the language or or you use google translate <laughs> so i recommend both so what does it mean to learn another language if you know that your partner's language is different and it's not it's not natural to you it's not mm, easy maybe it feels like oh do i really need to say it in words it could be a little bit you know like learning anything new there could be a little bit of resistance there could be a little bit of rebellions like why do i need to do this thing why can't you learn mine right uh, but i promise you if you learn it even little by little your partner will appreciate it so much that your return on investment on your time and your energy will return 10 times over. So also the translation can work the other direction. That's why I say Google Translate. If you know your love language of your partner and you see that they give you love in the way that it's natural for them, but it's not yours, then you can still translate it in your head. It's like, oh, that means they love me. So for example, if your partner's love language is quality time and they actually schedule time in the calendar and they freed up the afternoon for you, but your love language, let's say, is physical touch and you're like, okay, well, we're sitting here on the couch talking about stuff. Uh, that's not fun. But if you remember this, oh, that's their love language. That's the priority for them that you can perceive even that as love, even though it is not natural to you. I'll give you another example how learning another love language can actually be healing for you. Uh, I had a best friend many years ago, and at a time, um, for me, words of affirmation was not on the top of my love language list. And it was actually really strange for me to speak the words of appreciation and love verbally out loud, even to a friend. And her love language, primary one, was words of affirmation. And she specifically told me so, like we were very close, and she's like, Galena, like, I, I know you love me, but it's very important for me to hear that in words. And it's very important for me to hear uh, when you see certain things in me that you appreciate. Could you possibly express that sometimes? And I sat with that request, I'm like, oh, I can try, but oh, everything in me, she's like, I don't like it, it feels weird, it feels like I need to come up with some stuff. Um, but after I sat with it for a bit and I did some like inner soul searching, I realized that I also had some triggers around it you know, from everything comes from the childhood, right? So it was very hard for me to express love verbally because I had some traumas associated with it. When I did express it in some early school years, I got mocked for it, I got laughed at. So like I had a little trauma wrapped around words of affirmation. So when I cleared the trauma, then A, it was easier for me to express it to my friend. Then it transferred into all other areas of my life and it was much easier for me to express gratitude to my coworkers and my boss and and, and it, it went and it really transformed my whole life in many ways. Just because it was not natural for me, it doesn't mean it was not good for me. It's just I had reasons why it was hard. So, and very often, especially in romantic relationships, we pick our counterparts unconsciously that cause us to grow because they complement us, but they also trigger our traumas. So if your partner wants something from you that's not natural for you, see that not just as an opportunity to give them what they want, but as an opportunity for you to expand, for you to be more comfortable with other languages, to you go into other new areas of, of yourself. What else? So uh, also important to know that this understanding of love languages does not just relate to romantic relationships, uh, because that's the primary context sometimes, but it goes the same for parents, for friends, it goes the same way with coworkers and kids. So, um, for example, if your kids love language is quality time and you constantly give them gifts, they feel unloved. We know those stories, right? Uh, of you know kids who grew up in a lot of money but they didn't feel loved because their parents didn't have time for them. Uh, but it could also be the other way around that you spend a lot of time for them, but their language is gifts, and you giving them one little candy or one little toy will change their whole day. So, learning what is the love language of your child. Notice how they behave, how they express love, so that you can give it to them in that way and then they can flourish and they can expand because they will actually feel loved and not just mentally know that you love them. 
The same goes with coworkers, especially if you're a manager or a boss, knowing what is the love language of your colleagues is vital. Because you, know, you may think that giving them more money is that what makes them feel appreciated, but maybe what will make them feel appreciated is a kind word of like, hey, I really appreciated you staying late last night. Like you never know. So, so finding keys to people around you, uh, think of it as an analogy I can think of as like Sherlock Holmes. Like you become the investigator and the researcher that you can look around and it's like, hmm, I wonder what is the love language of my best friend or my love language of my neighbor or my love language of my boss. Like see if you can pick it up, see if you can deduct it from what you can observe around them because then you can be more effective communicator with them and express your love appreciation and, and um, gratitude in the way that they can perceive and receive fully. So um, another important thing to note is that between those five love languages, um, usually, and I mean usually because everybody's different, usually people have one or two primary love languages, one or two kind of secondary, and then one or two kind of not important. And those things can also change with time. I'll give you an example about me. So I had, at certain time, quality time was my number one, my top, nothing else really mattered. Then when I worked through my resistances around words of affirma affirmation, I realized it was actually important for me, but I was so deprived of it, I couldn't even allow myself to want it. So when I cleared that, then it became important. Now I had two primary languages, you know, the quality time and words of affirmation. Then physical touch. Back then 10 years ago was not important for me. Why? Because I actually had a lot of uh, sexual trauma from my early uh, college years and, and, and beyond. And for me, actually sexual energy and physical touch was tied with something unpleasant. So I didn't want that because for me it caused stress, it caused tension. Like why would I want more tension in my life? Oof. And when I cleared that and I realized and discovered that physical touch could be pleasurable, enjoyable, and loving, then guess what? I wanted more of it. And then my three love languages on the top became all three. And with time, different ones changed priority. So, um, and acts of service and gifts were like never at all priority, except when I get too busy and I had too much on my plate, and my friends and my partners can help me take care of things. Like a few years ago, I had a boyfriend and I had to like rent out my apartment and I was really stressing out. And he's like, can I just take care of it for you? And I'm like, oh yes, please. And he did. And I felt so loved. I felt so cared for because now that stress was off my plate and, and it was taken care of. So in the stressful times, acts of service also becomes important. In not stressful times, it doesn't matter. So don't think of love languages as something set in stone. Like it actually changes with time and changes with you as you change. So wrap it all together. We talked about the five love languages and the way that you can communicate with people with different ones and the way you can learn to understand and translate it and apply to all your relationships, friendships, business relationships, your romantic relationships, your parents, uh, so that you can actually Make sure that the love you communicate lands on the other side and the love that comes your way you can fully receive. So if you love this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to my channel for more videos like that. If you have specific topics you'd like me to share more about, please leave it in the comments. Uh, if you have questions, also please leave it in the comments. I really appreciate your feedback because I really want to create content that's useful for you. See you soon.